One of the biggest pieces of, of advice I could give any photographer who shoots solo and also edits his own work after the fact, because you're doing so much work, is to make sure you practice compositions and knowing your camera inside out, because depending on raw and shooting and, and trying to get it right in post is gonna take up way more time than if you try to get as much right in camera. Try to pre-imagine your scenarios, your settings, know what max ISOs you wanna shoot at, know when, if you don't have enough light, when to pop the flash on, how much power, what distance you need to be at because that'll save you so much time in the edit. Um, you know, as someone who primarily shoots by himself, I do have, you know, my wife as my partner and I have others that, you know, I work with here and there. It's important that I save myself a, a lot of time in post because you can really eat up your, your, your pay rate, basically, by doing everything in post and trying to save it with raw files. If you haven't noticed, I'm sitting in my backyard, not in the basement, having some family time outside, but I thought I'd do some videos. So. Uh, just want to tell you where I am. So back to that. So yeah, definitely try to get it right in the camera. You know, what I try to do is know know my scenarios, know what is that I want to shoot with, and then try to make sure that I always like for me personally, I, I've tried to max out at 16 to 3200 ISO and know that no matter what, I can control noise in any situation, no matter how dark a light it is, because if I'm shooting past 800, a lot of the times I'm gonna have my flash with me for an event in particular, you know, that's indoors. So I know that no matter what, I can get a kiss of light, you know, or even a, or a bigger burst of light, depending on how far the, the subject is that I'm shooting. And then I can try to predetermine what my shots are. And then also locking down as much of your white balance situations as possible. And then, you know, another thing is to make sure you, you have standards in your, your editing software. So I use Luminar 4. I've been using that for quite some time, so I know it pretty well. And I have a, a standard way of doing things that, you know, so I'll take all the photos and I'll batch process them you know, batch process the raws a, a particular way. So I'll group them in certain situations. Like I know the dance floor shots might be different than, than say the walk-in shots. They were, they were lit differently because of where they were in the room. And so I'll group my shots together, group my raw files together, and then do a batch processing that gives me about 70% of the editing that I need. And then I'll touch up the other 30 myself. You know, so I'll just do a batch process and then the other 30, excuse me, I'll jump in and just, you know, tweak each photo as needed. Because, you know, even though they might be generally in the same situation, they may not always be exactly, need the exact same kind of editing from the lighting, etc. You know, one person might be lit well in the shot and the other isn't. There might be a shadow on a corner that you need to brighten. You know, someone might be wearing dark clothes in the, in the same situation and another person might be wearing light clothes, so it changes the way the lighting is perceived in the shot. So you have to take that all into account and then go in and t tweak that individual photo. So I'll batch process it, I'll process it and run, run it all the way through and do my, what I call my first pass. And then my second pass will be me going in and just looking at the processed JPEGs and then say, you know what, this one needs a tweak. I'll go back into that very particular photo tweak it as needed and then keep going from there so it really it really works out for me to save a lot of time even from a personal standpoint you know when I'm doing family photos you know sometimes I want to take those raws a lot of times I just go with the JPEGs because I have more time when it's personal to really get it right even more so in camera but when I'm still want to you know touch the raws for something that I really want to keep and do something with you know I still have that same you know process where I can kind of batch process certain shots the same way and then go back and tweak the ones that need a little bit of extra TLC. So that's just my tip when dealing with RAWs. Don't depend on the RAWs. Try to get it right in camera. Get your scenarios, like practice your scenarios before any event, before any shoot you can, any portrait session you can, you know, get your scenarios right. Know what white balance ranges you like to be in 
you know, like especially with food photography, I do that. You know, I, I lock I lock down everything, even the white balance. So every shot is almost, you know, the same cookie cutter from a quality perspective. And then I can batch process and then do my second pass to get the individual touch up. So this is my tip. I hope it helps you. If you like that, give me a like, you know, give me a comment. Let me know how you do your editing, how you process raws and what's your approach to, you know, how you, uh, you know, edit your photos. All right. Talk to you in the next one.